to the Image and Wire show. My name is Jake Fishman. I'm the host of the show and the editor of the Image and Wire newsletter. And uh, we have an excellent, excellent episode for you today. We have Sonia Sani from GE Healthcare. Sonia is the chief marketing officer for the molecular imaging and CT scanner group, uh, which is a really, really big job. And it means that Sonia has a front row seat to so many things that are happening in our industry. And we're going to learn about some of those things today. So welcome to the show, Sonia. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me here today. Uh, it's so good to have you. Um, so can't wait to learn about all of those things. To start off, I want to learn a little bit more about you. Tell us about yourself. Sure. So um, as you said, uh, Chief Marketing Officer for Molecular Imaging and CT uh, for GE Healthcare globally. Um, I have uh, started out as a biomedical engineer um, by training only um, and then I did my MBA as well, but then uh, I went straight to GE and uh, started with GE right out of school. I, actually, I noticed that that you have this um, kind of pretty impressive and, and uh, you know full career career at GE Healthcare. Uh, it's not every day that I see somebody's LinkedIn profile and there's just one uh, one logo <laughs> on there. Um, I'm curious. I, I can't imagine that this was your very first job. What, what were you doing before GE? Yeah, well, mainly I was in school. Um, I did have a couple cool internships along the way. Um, none as cool as GE Healthcare, of course, but uh, I did work at Aston Martin Jaguar Land Rover uh, for a little while, which was a really fun experience. Uh, we got to take home cars on the weekend, which surprised me because I barely got my driver's license and they gave me a Aston Martin to <laughs> take uh, home for a weekend, which was really a good experience. Taking a CT scanner home for the weekend is not quite the same. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not, but you're right that GE Healthcare is way cooler than Smart. Uh, but but then here you go from you know being in the front driver's seat of uh, an Aston Martin to driver's seat for uh, all the marketing for CT and MI at GE, which is a big deal. And it, it means that you kind of are able to learn from so many of your clients and, and what they're experiencing seeing. I was hoping you could share a little bit about um, kind of what's happening on the, the front lines of medical imaging right now. Yeah, I mean, that's a that's a great question. I think that that's something as marketing, we really need to stay on top of um, getting voice of customer, understanding what are the challenges our customers are facing is top priority for us. Um, so of course, there's many channels we can do that. We talk directly to customers at things like trade shows and industry um, association meetings, as well as you know we go visit their sites, market research, focus groups, medical advisory boards. Um, and then of course, we rely on third party uh, market research and market reports as well. I think all of them are pointing to the same key trends. Uh, they're pointing to a shortage of talent. So radiologists, technologists, administrators, really just a huge shortage of talent on the healthcare delivery side. But on the patient side, we're seeing CT procedures grow. And I think we just saw some numbers there where there was about 13% more procedures in 2021 versus 2020. So that's 84 and a half million procedures in the US alone. Um, so that number just, I think, continues to climb. So the procedures are growing. They're also getting more advanced. So that's another challenge. And granted, it was a COVID year last year, so budgets were a bit strained um, from a lot of perspective, but keeping up with technology in all of that at the same time, I think, is one of the biggest challenges. And half the people we speak to, they say that keeping their technology current is one of their biggest challenges. Right. And I mean, that's really quite a situation to be in, right, where the volume and complexity of volumes going up, the people who are responsible for handling that volume, whether it's performing the scans or reading them, are going down or at least not going up at the rate that scans are. Um, and that, like the, the technology parts, I guess, up to you, right? So what are, what are, what's, uh, what's GE doing with all that understanding after doing that research and learning from your clients and the folks on the front line? What are you doing to respond to it? Yeah, I mean, I think we took a hard look at all these challenges and we said, how can we help? You know, what can we do as a 
med tech manufacturer to actually impact this. Um, when we see procedures are growing and getting more advanced, I think we need to make sure that whatever we build can be ready for today, but also ready for the future. And we're building intelligence into the system so that advanced procedures feel a little less daunting for a technologist to uh, go through, or they can we can speed up how quickly they can go through an advanced procedure, um, or even just spend less time at the scanner and more time with the patient, uh, which is always a good goal um, for the healthcare providers to have. So I think that's one thing. And as well, even you know, because 64 slice is basically uh, a baseline, we had to offer technology that already hits the baseline, but then can continue to grow with them as their procedures grow or change or expand. And then the final one is on the protecting their investment. So when someone spends a lot of money on a CT scanner, they don't want to find out, you know, just like you and I, we buy a iPhone 12 and find out iPhone 13 comes out the next day. Um, so, you know, that's a, a challenge that I think we all face in technology and the speed of innovation. And we don't want to stop that speed of innovation either. So protecting the investment, future proofing the technology such that as more funds become available or as procedures start to change or grow or reimbursements in the U.S. change, they have the ability to update. Uh, the system as opposed to swap out the entire system. So that was basically the challenges we put forward to our engineering team and said, how can we build something that could address uh, these things? And uh, what did they come up with? So at RSNA last year, uh, so in 2021, uh, we introduced the Revolution Apex platform. Uh, and so platforming uh, is the approach we took with this where you can actually scale the system as the needs continue to change. So it already starts with state-of-the-art clinical capability, but can upgrade uh, from a hardware and a software perspective through um, smart subscription and through uh, hardware updates in order to stay current and to you know, stay on the leading edge of technology. So that was the, you know, essentially the Revolution Apex uh, platform is what they designed as a result of this. Excuse the, the feature geek in me, but how exactly does the, the Revolution Apex platform work in terms of, um, I guess, what parts are module and, and how do those things, uh, you know, get added on? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, I mentioned it already comes pretty well built. So it already has a super high powered tube on it. It already has uh, things like gemstone spectral imaging, our, our GSI dual energy type offering. But the detector itself offers a lot of clinical capability. So as you get larger in detector size, clinical capability also starts to increase. So it starts as a four centimeter uh, detector, and we can actually in field swap out that detector for an eight centimeter or for a 16 centimeter detector, which continues to grow the clinical capability of the system. That's so cool. So I take it that uh, traditional upgrade doesn't exactly work like that. How how are, how's that different from the way folks have been updating or upgrading or replacing their CT up until the Revolution Apex? Yeah, so I mean, actually, I like to quote one of our customers who who kind of told us this. They said, you know, we'd keep throwing software at the system every few years just to try to keep it current. Um, and I think of that even, you know, with my phone or something like that, like, you know, maybe you upgrade the storage, maybe you upgrade the RAM, maybe, you know, you, you do some of these softer type things, software improvements till the point where the hardware is just unusable and you have to drag it out and put something brand new in. Um, and then there's a learning curve associated with that. So when you put a brand new system in, there would be a learning curve with this, um, system because you're just in field in site, like at the hospital site, swapping out one detector module for a larger detector module, the user interface remains the same. Some of the clinical capabilities, if you're expanding them, of course, those types of things would require training if the technologists are not familiar with those types of um, procedures. But for the most part, it still feels like you're using a system that you've been using before. So the learning curve essentially isn't there. So from a critical perspective, when when an organization adopts the Revolution Apex, what's the, the clinical impact? 
Yeah, so the, I mean, the clinical impact, we had to make sure that the system had, you know, at least the standard, uh, you know, procedures in the US, head and neck, chest, abdomen, pelvis, these are all the standard procedures. And with a high powered tube with true fidelity, which is our image reconstruction algorithm um, that, you know, shows really pretty pictures, according to our radiologist, uh, all of that stuff is there already in the system. It's got a wider bore. Um, so to accommodate the combination of a tube, a, a high powered tube and a wider bore can accommodate heavier patients um, as we see the population starting uh, to go in that direction. So all of those clinical advantages are there. As you start to build the system, um, you know, even beyond that, you can get to the 16 centimeter detector where if cardiac is something the site specializes in, you can get to one beat cardiac, one rotation uh, head, those types of procedures all become a lot faster and easier. But the four centimeter on its own as a baseline still has, you know, everything they need. Same question from an organizational perspective. So the folks who are, you know, care about the clinical stuff, but obviously are responsible more for the, you know, financial or, or efficiency side, what, what's the impact on that side? Yeah, I mean, I think, I think it's a very easy math equation to solve. Um, when you look at, at how long people are keeping their systems these days, 10 years ago, they probably kept it for seven years and they would replace their system every seven years. So if we even put rough math on it, call it a CT scanner, you know, a million dollars for easy math, um, every seven years you're spending a million dollars. Now they're spending a million dollars every 12 years. Um, they've extended the amount of time they're sitting with a system. So they're spending it every 12 years and they're not getting any benefits along the way. So now rather than having to swap out your entire system, you do a simple upgrade, which is a fraction of the cost um, to replace the detector than it is to buy a whole new system. Look at that over the course of, you know, time, you will see that there's quite a, quite a advantage financially to just upgrading a system rather than swapping out the whole thing. There would be also, you know, the downtime associated with it, the training of the new um, user interfaces. Like there's so many different costs that are almost hidden in it. So the equipment one is obvious. And I think there's a lot of hidden ones that we could explore as well. This makes so much sense to me. And I feel like it's a thing that, uh, you know, the products I mainly use, which are like enterprise type software products, it's, it's normal, right? Why, why hasn't anybody done this before? It's a good question. I, you know, I think that, you know, the philosophy behind this is pretty much platforming. It's to be able to reap the advantages of a particular platform. So the, the basis of the system and upgrade as we go, that's not new. Um, I think other vendors have done that. We see that, you know, as you were saying in your enterprise software world, you see that in cars, you can scale up and down cars. Um, but does the manufacturer offer that through the life of the system, actually, they probably don't in cars either, uh, where you can't just come back and say, okay, I'd like a sunroof <laughs> or, or, okay, I'd like a, um, you know, you add something to my system that doesn't usually happen. What we're trying to do is take that platforming philosophy and translate that benefit over to our customers. And that's really, I think, where we are um, innovating in the industry um, and something that hasn't been done before. Thank you for that. And, and I think back to those trends that you talked about at the beginning. Uh, with the imaging volumes and complexity and the, you know, the HR challenges that are facing radiology departments. Um, how do you expect that trend to change going forward? And then, you know, for the, you know, med tech manufacturers who have, you know, high levels of empathy, how, how should they change to um, support these future needs? Yeah, I mean, I don't see it changing drastically, to be honest. I think it just will continue to heighten. Um, you know, with the last few years, the challenges that we faced with COVID, I think it's the idea of doing more with less is everywhere. And I think our, you know, our, our radiologists are feeling that, our technologists are feeling that the number of procedures are growing, as I mentioned, but there's also more data than before. There's more procedures, there's less of all of the resources that once used to support all of that. Uh, so, you know, I think from a manufacturer standpoint, we just need to support 
that um, support their challenges and actually build meaningful technology that will have an impact on the challenges that they have today um, and address a lot of the things that they struggle with. So I think that's you know the only thing we can do to support them and continue to listen. So as the changes happen, um, as they inevitably will, um, we continue to listen and innovate and respond uh, to their needs. You're here. It seems like you've been doing that, so, so bravo. Um, I, that pretty much wraps us up for today, and I, and I thank you, Sonia, for that. And I'd say to the folks who are viewing this, um, you know, if you are, if you do own a CT, if you use it all the time, and if you expect that your needs might change over the next seven to 10 years, uh, you have a really good reason to talk to Sonia and her team about the Revolution Apex um, and, uh, you know, make sure that you're future proofed for your own CT needs. So thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, Sonia, for coming and uh, everybody have a great day. Thank you, Jake.